we uh, finished uh, the white horse. It took us two weeks to do the teaching on the white horse. Nos tomó dos semanas para dar la enseñanza del caballo del jinete blanco. And we're going to start on another horse today. The white horse. Uh, who was the one that was coming? Anybody know who was coming on that white horse? White horse? Oh. <laughs> Who's coming on that white horse? I heard some people say Jesus, and I heard somebody say the Antichrist. Who's coming on that white horse? The Antichrist is coming on that white horse. You have to, you have to listen. You have to pay very, very close attention because you can be misled. Okay. We don't want you to be misled. We want you to know the truth because the Bible says that the truth will... So, don't be misled. There's two white horses. Remember what the enemy does? He is imitating God. We know that Jesus is coming on the white horse. But we know that the enemy is coming on the white horse too. The Antichrist trying to imitate Jesus. Amen. We talked about him being the chief son of Satan. Amen. The master of deception. He was promising what? Promising he was bringing peace into the world. And then what was he going to do once he promised that? He was going to promise peace for how, how long? Three and a half years. And then after that? Okay. Destruction was going to happen. All hell was going to break loose, right? So we have to understand that the one that is coming first is the Antichrist trying to bring deception into the world. Amen. He came in saying if we take the mark on our hand, on the right hand or our forehead, amen, if we do take it, if we don't take this, then they're going to have to chop our heads off. Right? So, but if you do take it, then you'll lose your soul. And your, your, your end is what? Hell. So, we see this that we talked about a little bit of the white horse, and I don't want to go into too much of it, but we see that, that, you know, that is what represented the white horse, was the Antichrist was coming in, and coming in to bring a one world religion, a one world order, a one world currency. He's bringing all these things into the world. He's coming in, but his whole objective is try to get, you know, once he brings the one world religion, he's going to do the same thing they did. Uh, it's, it's build an image and want everybody to worship that image. Amen? And it's just like, like Pharaoh uh, did, como Faraón. He made a statue, said everybody. Amen? The King Nebuchadnezzar, el rey Nebuchadnezzar, como se llamen, también hicieron una, una, una imagen, hicieron que la adorara. Same thing that the Antichrist is going to do. He's going to try to create an image and he's going to want everybody to worship. But we will not worship because we're not going to be here no more. Amen? Ya no vamos a estar aquí. So we go to the book of Revelation, chapter 6, and we're going to start on the red horse, which is uh, verse 3 and verse 4. Versículo 3 y 4 del capítulo 6 de Revelaciones. And it says like this. When the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living, living creature say, Come. Then, he came, then another horse came out, a fiery red horse. A fiery red horse. Okay? Its rider was giving power. Listen. Power to take what? One's bringing peace. The first one's bringing peace. The second one's doing what? He's taking it away. He's taking peace from the earth and to make men slay each other to him was giving a large sword. Now we have to understand. One was giving peace. He was trying to bring peace into the earth for three and a half. But the second one that's coming is bringing is coming in to take the peace away. And you know that when there's no peace, all hell will break loose. Right? When there's no peace, we don't make good decisions. Right? When there's no peace in your heart, you're all like crazy. So we have to be very careful, amen, on this red horse. Now, a thought to consider is this. The red horse is bringing a global nuclear war. 
the red horse is bringing a global nuclear war. El caballo rojo va a traer, aleluya, una guerra nuclear, una guerra mundial nuclear. Nuclear world war. This is what the red horse is bringing. Amen. The Iran nuclear deal between uh, America and Iran guarantees, amen, that there will be a nuclear war in the Middle East. Listen, and it is going to spread out through the whole earth, and that includes America. And I need you to understand something that is very important. Something that is very important. Albert Einstein predicted that it was going to be on a full scale, a nuclear exchange, that one-third of Earth's population will die. One-third, una tercera parte, de toda la creación en el mundo iba a morir en esta guerra nuclear, this nuclear war. That means, pay attention, that means that 110 million people in America are going to die. 110 million people in America are going to die. 110 millones de personas en America van a morir acerca de esta guerra nuclear through this nuclear war. Amen? People say that it's an, an, an exaggeration of that many people dying in one war, but according to the word of God, according to the word of God, amen, it is going to happen. It is going to happen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. You have to understand something that when God says something, it's going to come to pass. Cuando Dios habla algo, algo va a suceder. Listen. Revelation chapter 9, verse 14 and 15. Revelaciones capítulo 9, versículo 14 y 15. This is John, the writer. Juan, el que está escribiendo. He writes this, and I read. It is said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river uh, Elphrathus. And the fourth angel who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Did you read that? And the four angel were loose. Four angels were loose which were pre prepared for an hour, a day, a month, and a year, for them for what? To slay one-third of the population. How is it going to happen? Through a nuclear war. Amen? Church, it's biblical. It's in the Bible. It is right there. This is not a Pastor Tim kind of thing. This is the Bible. It says it on there. Amen? Can I tell you something? Global population right now is 6 billion people on this earth. 6 billion people. Imagine or think about 2 million people. 2 million people dying. Or two, not 2 million. 2 billion people. A third of, us, of 6 billion. 2 billion people dying in a short period of time. You might say, Pastor, we're going to go through this? Well, if you're not living right, yes, you're going to go through this. Amen? We have to be aware of the things that are to come. God gave prophecy. God sent prophets. God sent teachers to let us know of the things that are to come. Amen? That's what he kept on saying. In that day, in ese día, in that great day, in ese gran día. So he came to tell us things that we have to know just in case... My prayer is that none of you stay. None of you stay. But just in case you stay, let me tell you something. We're recording this, the teachings, so just in case you stay, you can come and grab one of those teachings. Amen. You can come and recite it again, read it, and do whatever you have to do. I believe that. We are at a point, church, where we have to, America and Iran and America were going to sign, and I don't know, did anybody see it? Did they sign this, the, the, the deal on the nuclear war? 
If they did, then we're in trouble. If Iran and America signed this treaty on the nuclear war, America is in trouble. Because all that did, it just opened up the door to death and hell. Amen. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. Zacarías capítulo 14, versículo 4. 12. 14, 4. 14, 12. Zechariah, if you know where Zechariah is at, so whatever, Haggai, Alagai, Magai, Obadai, and all of those died. Amen. All those names. Zechariah chapter 14. Say amen when you have it. Now, you have to understand, because here in Zechariah chapter 14, 12, God gives a graphic, listen, a graphic description of a nuclear war that is coming in the future. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. It's coming in the future. Amen? And you have to understand this, that Zechariah chapter 14 was written in the Old Testament. So that was many Many, many years ago. They didn't have no firecrackers. They didn't have no, no, no bombs like that. They didn't have nothing like that. But he gives a description of what a nuclear war it is it's going to do. And we need to pay very close attention to what Zechariah says on verses 14, uh, verse 12. Do you have it? Zechariah? Start with a Z. Okay. Zechariah 14, 12. It says like this. I got it in my Bible. I'll read it while they put it up there. <coughs> Sorry. And this shall be the plague. Listen, before I read this, I need you to understand something. The, 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 the peace, the, the, the nuclear treaty that Iran and our, uh, uh, America signed was to try to destroy Jerusalem or Israel. El, el, lo que ellos firmaron, Irán, Irak firmaron, era para destruir a Israel. And you know, according to the scripture, you do not touch God's people. And Israel is God's people. Israel es pueblo de Dios. Son hijos de Dios. Amen? So, there, what they did was they're getting into, remember that when Iran comes into an agreement with the U.S., they're not trying to keep that agreement. No está tratando de mantener ese, ese uh, acuerdo que tuvieron Irán y América. I remember that Iran is very sneaky. Okay, you have to understand, you need to entender eso. So here, Zechariah begins to uh, talk here, says, and this, and this shall be the plague where unto the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Listen to what's going to happen. Their flesh shall consume away while, they're, while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Did you understand that? Anybody that comes against Israel, which was what America and Iran just did, the Lord says, once this nuclear bomb comes in, listen, it says that their skin is gonna it's just gonna like melt away in a matter of seconds before the body ever falls to the ground or the bones ever fall to the ground. Antes de que caigan los huesos al suelo, ¿sabe qué? Toda la carne, todo el, el cuero, la carne se les va a deshacer. Their eyes. Their eyes, los ojos, shall consume away in their holes. Los, los ojos, los, los, los ojos se les van a deshacer. La lengua se les va, the tongue will, will also be consumed. It'll be disintegrated. It'll be dissolved. Their skin, their eye socket, their, 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 their tongue. Can you, I just want you to get the image of this, the picture, and I know that it may be a little bit graphic if you try to put it in your mind or try to understand it, but this is how bad it's going to be in this, if this, if Iran 
can come. Iran has the has the capability. Let me tell you something. Iran has the capability of sending a nuclear war, a nuclear bomb here whenever they want. They can do it today. They can do it tomorrow. Listen to this. The heat from a nuclear weapon can produce 150 million degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if you can understand. 150 million degrees Fahrenheit is how what a nuclear bomb can produce. We have 100 degrees and we are already sweating and complaining with the 100 degree weather. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But a nuclear bomb will produce 150 million degrees Fahrenheit in a fraction of a second. That means that the moment it expires or goes, that's it. Your skin will be gone before the bones ever touch the ground. Your eyes, you won't have no more eyes, you won't have no more tongue to even say help or anything like that. Like that in a moment. Help the Lord. Woo, Jesus. That's how quick the flesh will be melting from your bones, your eyes, and your tongue. Help us, Lord, yes. Help us, Lord. America made a covenant deal with Iran. America hizo un pacto con Irán acerca de esta bomba nuclear. Hallelujah. And we have to understand that this is going to happen, church. This is going to happen when you come in to try to mess with God's people. That's why God said, touch not my anointed, nor right. do my prophets any harm. No toques a mi, a mi ungido, y no, because listen, my God, I know that God is a loving God. Yeah. I know that God is a righteous God. I know that God loves us and He cares. But God, you, you touch, I tell you this all the time, you touch one of your kids, then now hell will break loose, right? Chancla will go off, earrings will go off, chongo, right? You touch one of your kids, uh, you guys know your moms, right? right. Your mom's the type that will tell me who it is. I'm going to go with it. Right. You, we got parents that go all the way into the school and mess with the principal or the teacher or whatever. You mess with my kid, that's it. It's on. I'm taking off everything. My shoes, my chancla, it's on. We're going. Right? God loves his children that if you touch them, So be careful, little tongue, what you say about the man and the woman of God. And I'll leave it at that. I'll let you ponder on that. Hallelujah. Very powerful. Got to be very careful. You might think you're not doing nothing wrong, but not according to the scripture. Listen to this. Isaiah. Isaiah saw this nuclear deal and he wrote about it. The nuclear deal that America and Iran did, Isaiah saw it many years ago. And we're going to read it in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 14. Starting on verse 14. Isaiah 28, 14. Isaiah chapter 28, 14. Is anybody enjoying this? Is anybody getting any information on this? Would be okay if I put my glasses on? Come in front of me. Woo, let it look big. Thank you, Jesus. God says let it be big. Are you ready? Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You scoffers who rule this people in Jerusalem, you boast. Listen to this. What America and Iran just did. Listen to what they did. We have entered into a covenant with what? Death. With the grave. We have made an agreement with an overwhelming scourge, 
sweeps by, it cannot touch us. For we have made a lie our refuge and falsehood our hiding place. Listen, church, you have to understand that they came into agreement with death. They came into agreement with death and hell. This angel, this 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 this, this one riding this red horse is coming in and is coming in to destroy. His objective is to destroy. Su objetivo es destruir. Can I get an amen? amen. His, his objective is just to come in. Death and hell is going. Things are going to produce. Things are going to happen when this horse. America has just signed. They signed this this disagreement with this. Can I tell you how dumb this is? Listen to how dumb it is. America told Iran this. Iran, you choose your uh, uh, inspectors. We're going to let your people inspect the nuclear bombs that you are building. That's how dumb they are. Excuse me, but they are. How are you going to let an ally inspect the weapon that they're doing to come and kill us? It makes no sense. Come on, somebody. America said, Iran, we're going to let your inspectors inspect your bombs. And you send us pictures of the bomb and you let us know how they are and you tell us the truth. Iran said, okay, hey. You think they're taking pictures of, they're taking pictures of something totally different. And they're giving false information to America to make them believe that what it is that they're doing over there and they're going according to whatever agreement that they just signed. That is a lie. You want to know why that's a lie? Because Iran, right after they signed the bill, went over to Russia, which is one of America's. In, in the contract, I told you this last week, in the contract it was said that nobody else is supposed to come in and know about the agreement that they had signed and what was in it. So what does Iran do? Iran runs to so America tells Iran, it's okay, just use your inspectors. Let them inspect all the weapons, all that nuclear stuff that you have there. Send us pictures. Let us know how everything's going. That's a dumb move. That is a dumb move. My God. Hmm. Why? Because they're doing things to come in to hurt us. They're not going to tell us the truth. They're not going to tell us the truth. Amen? And they're coming against us. They're coming against us. Can I tell you what happened? The, uh, uh, Iran, in the, uh, 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 back in 1980, they said that uh, uh, Iran put these, uh, what do you call these, these uh, 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 massive uh, ma uh, uh, minefields Iran put this massive minefields. Uh, uh, Iran puso estas, uh, uh, ¿cómo se llaman? Las, las, las bombas que están abajo en la tierra. Where you step on them and they just... Minas. Listen, listen to what they did. They got a hundred thousand children. And they put all the, these landmines Pusieron estas minas todas y agarraron a ciento mil niños. And they told the kids this, we want you to run across this field. We want, they lied to the kids and they said, you know what, if you run and you die, there's something waiting for you in heaven. Algo te está esperando en el cielo. So what did these kids do? All these kids ran through the field and it was a massive, massive massacre of children who lost their lives. And the parents were okay with it. Los papás no dijeron nada. Ciento mil niños murieron en este evento que hizo. Do you think that they care about you? Do you think they care about your children? 
How about your teenagers? They don't care. They don't care about the people that they have there. Their own kin, they're not going to care about us. They don't care. They can throw a bomb in here and, 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 and three quarters or half of the United States can be gone. They don't care. Because if they don't care for the ones that they have there, they're not going to care for us. Si no les importó los niños que tienen que son de ellos, no nos van a importar los de nosotros. They don't care. They hate us. Their whole objective is not only to destroy Israel, but it's also to destroy the United States. And it's going to happen. Look at your neighbor and tell them it's going to happen. They're going to betray America. They're coming against Israel. They're coming to destroy Israel. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell them I don't want to stay here. They are signing, they, they came in, Russia is coming in, that is going to come against the United States. They're coming in, they said that this nuclear uh, bomb, they say that it is so bad that it can reach all the way on this side of New York City. And it has so much force. Amen. They have so much force. And you have to understand something is that America is allowing these things to happen. America is allowing these things. Amen. Because they were they're focusing on, on, on something that is called intercontinental missiles. Intercontinental missiles. Missiles intercontinentales. They are coming in, they call it EMP, AMP. That's what they call these missiles that are that they're trying to build. And you know what? These nuclear, these bombs that they're they're so cheap. And they can send it from where they're at to over here. And they will destroy. It will destroy so many cities and states here in the United States. It can happen like that. Why hasn't it happened, Pastor? Why aren't they doing it? Because we have one called the Holy Spirit that the Bible says that He's holding everything back until the church gets raised up. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Anybody need somebody to thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit? These missiles listen these intercontinental missiles, estos misibles intercontinental, you know what they're going to do? Once they shoot one of this, they have this, this deal inside. What, what this missile does is this. It cuts off all electricity. Anything that has to do electrical, this one missile will take care of that. Este misible... Lo que va a hacer, él va, viene y va a quitar todo que tiene, que tiene que ver con la luz. In other words, we won't have no light. Our refrigerators won't work. Your cars will not work anymore. Radios will not work. Anything. You won't have internet. You won't have television. You won't have cell phones. So I feel sorry for you teenagers that your cell phone is your life support. Yeah, you won't have no cell phones. You won't have anything that has to do with electrical, even your vehicles. I'm here to tell you today that even at the White House, the president is going to have a hard time trying to communicate with his soldiers or with his, with, with, with his uh, army. Why? Because this missile will take care of all the electricity in the United States. That means that once that hits, the food you have in it is going to go back. Freezer is not going to work. So if you have a lot of meat, if you have a lot of food in you, it's going to go bad. And can you can you imagine the stench, the smell in this world when this happens? Does anybody want to stay to see all of that? The United States, we don't have we, don't, we, we have been cut down to, they say we have been cut down to a level two. A level two. That we are not capable of defending ourselves against these groups that are coming, these terrorists that are coming against us. 
Amen. We have to be very careful. Can I tell you something? A hundred and fifty billion dollars are going to Iran from the U.S. A hundred and fifty billion dollars are going to where we're, we're lending money. And you know what they're doing with that money? They're building weapons to destroy you. Hey, can you give me a loan so I can destroy you? Build the weapons to destroy you. That's pretty smart, right? Very smart from the United States that is coming in to get money. And what Iran is doing, Iran is distributing this money to who? Russia. China. All these are against the U.S. All of these are coming against us. My God, what is going to happen? Are we ready, church? Are we ready? God said, if you harm my people, I will harm you. If you do something to my children, I will do something to you. Aren't you glad that the Lord fights your battles? The Jewish people are God's people. And when you mess with God's people, that's why we pray. That's why we're always in tune to what's going on in Israel. Because whatever happens over there, if they send a bomb to destroy, to try to destroy Israel, forget it. That's it. We're done. Why? Because God's wrath will come upon the nation. La ira de Dios va a venir en contra de la nación. ¿Por qué? Porque venimos en contra de los hijos de Dios. We're God's children too. But there's people here in the United States that they don't want Israel alive. They want to destroy it. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Go to Haggai chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. Thank you, Jesus. Haggai chapter 2. You got it? Haggai. Can you put it up? Haggai chapter 2. Verse 21 and 22. Pay attention to that in Part of the speech back there. Okay. We've got the Joel spirit over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's Go away. Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heaven, of the heathen, and I will overthrow the chariots and, and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. The Lord says, when you do something to me, what is done to me or my children, it will be done to you. If an enemy comes against God's children, that enemy is going to turn around and do it to us. In other words, if Iran goes and does something to Israel, they're going to turn around and come back and do it to America. Why? Because America is playing a part in trying to destroy Israel. We need to come together as a church. What do we have to do? We have to pray. We have to come and pray for our for the nation of Israel and pray God protect them. God, don't let your wrath come upon these people. Protect, Lord. Protect your children, Israel. Protege tus hijos, Señor. We have to come in. We have to come in. Because listen, there's an army that is coming together. Iran is not coming by itself. Russia is one of the biggest ones. And they're getting people. They're getting nations. They're getting China. They're getting China to come in. And all of these are going to come in against not only Israel, but they're going to come in against the U.S. They're coming for us. Church, I'm here to tell you, it's time that we as a church wake up. Yes. We have to wake up. Yes. Tenemos que levantarnos, mis hermanos. Tenemos que levantarnos. Because do you remember? God said, God told Moses, Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh. And tell them to let my people go. Remember that? Yes. Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. Exodus 4, 22. Just saying it. 
4.22. There you go. Good girl, look at you. And thou, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is what? My son. My what? My son. Even my firstborn. This is God. Dile a Faraón que Israel es mi hijo y mi primogénito. Yes. My son is my firstborn. What you do to my son, I will do to you. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Isn't that what he says? What happened in, 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 in uh, what happened in Egypt? ¿Qué sucedió en Egipto? What did he do to one of them? Verse 23. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refusest to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. In other words, what you do to mine, I'm going to do to you. So he said, you let my people go. And if you refuse to let my son, my firstborn go, I'm going to take your firstborn. You take mine, I'm going to take yours. God gets mad. He touches children. You better be careful. Amen. These days, Jesus said, in those days, in those days, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 22, Jesus said, in those days, when is that? In those days. What days? These days that we're living. There's a lot of things going on in these days. There's a lot of madness going on in this world, church. There's a lot of hatred going on in this world, church. There's a lot of hatred. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 3. I'm giving you scriptures so that you'll see. Ecclesiastes capítulo 9, 3. Ecclesiastes 9, 3. Listen to what it says. This is the evil in everything. In everything that happens under the sun. The same destiny overtakes all. The heart of men, moreover, are full of evil, and there is madness in their hearts while they live and after they join the dead. Listen, it says, there's madness in their hearts while they're still alive. Isn't there a lot of madness going on with people right now? There's a lot of hatred going on right now, church. There's a lot of things going on right now. But God, protect us, Lord. In the middle of all of this that is going on, in the middle of everything that is going on in this world, God, protect us. God, protect us. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Israel is the center of the universe. Listen to me. We might not get into it too much, but we're going to get into Ezekiel, which is another book that people don't want to touch. But all these books in the Bible, these are things that God left for us. God left all of these for us to see, for us to read. We're going to get into Ezekiel 38 and Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39 where God begins to talk to Ezekiel about the dry bones because a lot of the times we have the dry bones confused but the dry bones were God's people. You remember? God told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, this is my people right here. Este es mi pueblo, Ezekiel. These are my people. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do with my people. 
I'm going to bless. I'm going to bless my. Voy a bendecir como les dije. Like I told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm going to bless my people. Say amen, somebody. Amen. God said. Ezekiel chapter 36. And I'll leave you with the scripture. 36 verse 7 through 11. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 7 through 11. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand. Surely the, the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. Verse 8. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruits to my people of Israel, for they are the hand to come. Verse 9. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. Verse 10. And I will multiply men upon you, and the house of Israel, even all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the way shall be uh, shall be built. Verse eleven, and I will multiply upon you men and beasts, and they shall increase and bring forth and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates, and I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am your God, the Lord. I am. He said, you know what? I'm going to bring all these things back to you. Israel, whatever they did to you, I'm about to bless you. I'm about to multiply you. God is telling us today, church, I'm about to multiply you. God is telling us today, God is going to bless us. I know some of us have been through some stuff. I know some of us have gone through some difficult situations, but I'm here to tell you today that God is still on the throne and that God will still fight for His people. Todavía está sentado en el trono y todavía va a pelear por su pueblo. I know it may seem impossible, but I'm here to tell you today, God said, I'm going to multiply the men. I'm going to multiply, meaning God is going to bring forth people that are going to help us. Amen. God is going to multiply. How are you going to multiply? He's going to multiply. He's going to bring people into this place. He's going to multiply the fruit of our hands. El fruto de nuestra mano. Dios va a multiplicarnos a nosotros mismos. Su palabra lo dice. Amen. He said he's going to put to shame who? The enemy. The one that tried to put you to shame. God says, no, I'm coming back to put him to shame. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The red horse is bringing within itself the nuclear war. But I believe that there's a people that have the Holy Spirit inside of them. That it's time that we get that Holy Spirit inside of us. Amen. To be able to do what God calls us to do. Because the Holy Spirit is saying, devil, you can't. Devil, you can't do it right now. Devil, you can't do this to my people now. Why? Because it's not your time. And they're not going to go through. They look at your neighbor and say, I'm not going to go through this stuff. We need the Holy Spirit. Church. Necesitamos la Espíritu Santo. We need the Holy Spirit to come in and be with us. We need the Holy Spirit because without it, you won't have no guidance. <coughs> We won't have no 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 va a haber guía, mi hermano, si no está el Espíritu Santo. He's our guy. Es nuestro guía. The Bible says that he's going to show us everything that we need to know. Él nos va a enseñar todas las cosas que sabe que necesitamos saber. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor telling you need the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is in you, but you need the Holy Spirit. Necesita el Espíritu Santo que venga sobre ti para qué? Para tener poder. Recibirás poder cuando el Espíritu Santo venga. You shall receive power. Amen. My God, we need the Holy Spirit. We need to be endued with power. Tenemos que estar revestidos de poder. Señor, amen. Revestidos de poder. It's time that we ask God, God, I need you to baptize me with the Holy Spirit. I need you to baptize me with the Holy Necesito, Señor, que me bautice con el Espíritu Santo. 
if you don't, if you are not being baptized, if you haven't been baptized by the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, then you know what? I urge you, I encourage you, that let that be your prayer every single day. Si no has sido revestido de poder y no has sido vestido del Espíritu Santo en hablar en otras lenguas, yo te quiero decir que esa sea tu oración. Señor, bautízame con tu Espíritu Santo. Lord, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Porque dice el Señor que ese es uno de los dones que nos da. El don de lenguas. El don de interpretación de lenguas. The gift of tongues, the gift of interpretation. Amen. We need that spirit in our lives today, church. I don't want to be here to see that horse or the white horse or any of the horses. Yo no quiero estar aquí, mi hermano, para ver a ese caballo, ni al blanco, ni saber si los quiero ver, los voy los de ahorita en un rancho, pero cuando venga el otro, ya no los voy a ver. Come on, somebody. I want to stay and see how they look. Well, they look the same. Every horse is the same. They just have something different in it. Amen. And we need church to live right, right now. We need to get things right, right now. Not tomorrow. Today. Today. Every day we today. Yeah. Okay. Stop going with the current. Okay. Stop going with the current. Be different. I challenge you. Go against it. Go against the current. Vamos en contra de la corriente. Es muy fácil ir con la corriente. Pero necesitamos gente que se levante. Como los tres jóvenes hebreos, the three Hebrew boys. Amen? The three Hebrew boys, they stood up and they went against the current. What everybody's doing is, yeah, but we're not doing that. Todos están haciendo esto. No, pero yo no voy a hacer eso. Yo no me voy a portar así. Yo no voy a hacer... I'm not going to do that. So they decided to be different. And because they were different, yes, they were put into a fiery furnace, but they didn't get touched. They didn't get burned. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor said, they didn't get burned. They didn't get burned. Why? Because they were on fire already for God. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. So church, let us not wait because tomorrow might be too late. No esperemos porque mañana va a ser tarde. We have next week, I'm going to give you the last part of this red horse, but then we have the other two horses coming, which is the green horse, the pale horse, and we have the other horse, which is called color. The next horse that we're coming to is called the horse of the family. And I'm here to tell you that if you think there's hunger in the United States now or in America or in the whole world, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because there's going to come a hunger that you have not seen before in the whole world. Va a haber un hambre y este caballo viene este caballo es el caballo aleluya que va a traer y va a quitar toda la comida va a quitar todos esos recursos and then the last horse that is coming is the one that is bringing total death to everything that comes in contact cualquier cosa que venga en contacto de ese caballo y sus alrededores va a haber muerte death completely death there will be nothing that Amen. Church, we gotta get right. We gotta get right. We can't be playing around. We can't be playing around. Or else you're gonna find yourself in this. Amen. This is serious. And you might think, "Man, when Pastor Strong is scared, it's not. It's all biblical. It's in the Bible. I've read everything that I read is in the Bible, <coughs> right?" <coughs> When a person, when a person gets burned, and it, you know, depending on the burn, you can tell how their skin is. My sister, when she was young, she got burned. She got burned from here all the way down with hot boiling water. She was two years old. I believe two years old, one year old, two years old. When they were trying to take her 
shirt off and her shorts. When they took her shirt, her skin came with the shirt off. That's how bad it was. We couldn't even we couldn't even stand to see how it was. And that's probably one of the pictures that I have in my mind of something that it, that that what the Bible has described that we read does not even come close to that. Because it says that our skin was going to be dissolved like that in a matter of seconds before our bones ever fall to the ground. Your eye sockets will be dissolved before the bones fall. Your tongue will be dissolved. <coughs> Do you want to be there? Do you want to be there to see this? Happen? I don't. I don't want to leave right now. I don't want to stay here to see any of that stuff. I don't want to stay here to go through, see what the white horse is going to bring, or see how, what all the chaos or all the madness. Are. I don't want to be here. I think with what I see right now in this world is enough. Hey Amen. It's enough. There's so much stuff going on right now. It's not even funny. There's so many, so many stuff. We don't have to go outside here in this city. There's a lot of things going on, and God has put us here for a reason. We need to be the light to shine to this world. We need to try to get all our family in here. They need to hear this. Those that are at the bar, those that are shooting up, those that are doing drugs, what they need to hear this stuff. You need to let them know, hey, you know what? There's a horse coming. I know sometimes we say it coming around, and you know what? There's a horse going to come and knock at your door. I told Sister Jessica, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get a ringtone of a horse. So I'm going to get a ringtone of a horse and whenever somebody's doing no, I'm wrong, it's going to pass and just press that button and just let that horse go like that. So just kind of remind the people, horse, if you don't behave, the horse will. <laughs> Pastor Lynn said he was going to go to Sister Jessica's window <laughs> at night and he was going to stand there with the speaker and he was going to put the noise of the horse <laughs> and I know that but it's whatever you have to do to remind you to live right right because sometimes we forget because we get caught up and sometimes we get caught up in situations where we know we're not supposed to be in so maybe every one of us should get a ringtone of a horse. You should kind of remind us that, hey, I gotta wait for no horse to come. When I'm, I'm only waiting, I'm only waiting to hear the trumpet. Because when that trumpet sounds, woo, see ya, I'm gone. Look at the neighbor say, I'm gone. You can have my house, my car. You can have everything you want in my house. That's fine. You can take it. I don't need it. I got gold up there. I got a house. I got a street gold. I got a crystal clear street. I got everything up there. I don't need nothing here. Amen? Amen. So, you want me to sign you my house? Let the trumpet sign. You can have my house. I don't care. Very important that we know not to get entangled in things that we're not supposed to. Amen. Amen. The Lord is coming sooner, sooner than we believe. The scripture says. How many used to go to? I remember when we used to go to church. When we used to be probably like Leonard's age. That's a really feel about his side, but uh, that's another story. I'm just uh, but we used to go to church when we were that that young, and we remember. When they were preaching, they would say, Jesus is coming. Yeah. Jesus is coming. And some of us, you know, a lot of us, we, we used to sleep under the, 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 the benches. But you know what? We could still hear the same preaching was that Jesus is coming. And I know a lot of people say, well, they've been saying that for years. But I would just rather be ready. I would just rather be ready because I want to stay. We, we, we've walked too far 
to go back. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> God is good. Let's pray. <coughs> 